few things I've been thinking about intelligence, and then we can go on <coughs> from there. So, you see, I always like to look up the meaning of the word and its origin. <laughs> and so it's very interesting. It's the origin is inter legere, which means to read between, between legere, uh, uh, as in legible. And the um, uh, it seemed to me you could say that the thought is like the information in a book. And the intelligence has to read it and read the meaning of it. Uh, and this, and, uh, and I think this gives a, a rather good notion of intelligence. To read between the lines. Yes. yes. And to see what it means. And there's also another meaning given in the dictionary, which is mental alertness. Yes, mental alertness. Yeah, I'm looking up. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, and of course, uh, this is very different from what people talk about usually when they measure intelligence yes, and so on. Yes. But now, and then uh, considering many of the things you've said in some of the excerpts that George has made, uh, you could say, you see, intelligence is not thought. Now, you say thought takes place in the old brain. It's a physical process taking place, you know, electrochemically. I mean, it has been amply proved by science that all thought is uh, essentially a physical, chemical, electrical process. Yes, yes. Now, then we could say intelligence, you say, is not of the same order, is not of the order of time at all. Right. Intelligence. Yes. yes. Intelligence reads this thought. You know, it sees the meaning of it. And now, I thought we could start on this question that, uh, see, well, there's one more point. You said that uh, it's essential for the old brain to see its limits right. so that it stays within its limits, you see, and doesn't yeah. make trouble. <laughs> now, uh, and of course, the thought tends to keep on worrying a question, unless it's really deeply uh, seen that this question has no meaning. The thought may tend to keep on at it, you see. Now, I think one of the questions which arises is something like this, that, uh, you see, you can say th thought is physical, uh, now, and then the mind or the intelligence, whatever you want to call it, uh, seems different, it's of a different order. So, would you say it's of the, that there's a, a real difference between the physical and, and the intelligence, or uh, yeah, that's what are we saying that this uh, that thought is matter? Let's put it for the well, ma I think pro uh, I'd rather call it uh, a ma material process. Material process, all right. Thought is material process, and what is the relationship between that and intelligence? Yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that it? Yes, and it raises many questions I which know. would be important for science. Yes, yes. Is intelligence the product of thought? Well, I think that we can take for granted that it's not. Right? It's not. Why? Why do we take it for granted it's not? Well, simply because uh, see, thought is mechanical. Thought is mechanical. And intelligence right. is not. Yes. Right? So, thought is measurable, intelligence is not. Yes. And how does, uh, how does it happen that this an intelligence comes into, into existence? If thought has no relationship with intelligence, then is the cessation of thought the awakening of intelligence? Or is intelligence being independent of thought and therefore not of time, exists always? Well, that, that raises you know, many difficult yeah, questions. Yes, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so I would like to put this in a, a sort of a framework of thinking, how one would uh, 
connect up whatever we're saying to uh, any scientific views that may exist. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, either to show that it fits or doesn't fit. Or yes, yes. Uh, and now, so you say uh, intelligence may be there always. And I'm asking, yeah, is it all? It may be or it may yeah. not be. Yes, yes. Uh, or it's possible that something interferes with intelligence. Right. You see, there is this, I think the Buddhists and the Hindus, if I'm right, have the theory that mm, the ancient in Hindu, mm -hmm. the theory that intelligence of Brahman exists always. And it's covered over by illusion, by matter, by idiocy, by all mm -hmm. kinds of um, mischievous things created by thought. I don't know if they would go as far as that. Well, yes, that we don't actually see the eternal existence of intelligence. Mm, no. So, they say, peel this off. Mm -hmm. That thing is there. So, it, their assumption is to, it existed always. But there's a difficulty in that, and the word always, you see. Yes, it, yes, I know. It is, yes. Because always implies time. You time, see. that's right. And uh, that's just the trouble. I mean, that, that time is thought. That uh, I mean, that, that thought, I, I would like to put it, that thought is of the order of time, or perhaps it's the other way around, that time is the, is the order of thought. Thought, oh, that's, yes. Uh, that thought, in other words, thought has invented time. Yes. And in fact, uh, thought is uh, time. Is time. Because... I mean, the, well, the way I see it sometimes is like this, that thought may sweep over the whole of time at one moment, but then <coughs> it's always changing. Yes. So without noticing it, Quite. The thought is changing physically. Yes. For physical reasons, that is. Yes. Not, not rational reasons. Not, you know, and rational and irrational reasons, yes. Uh, yes. But the reasons are not having to do with something total. No. But they have to do with some physical movement in the brain. Yes. And therefore, the, the Dependent thought is on mechanical. environment and all kinds of things, yes. yes. So therefore, the meaning, as thought changes with time, its meaning is no longer consistent. It becomes contradictory. It yes. changes in an arbitrary way. Yes, yes, I follow that. Right. So uh, now, uh, that, now, now then, of course, you begin to think. Uh, well, all right, uh, everything is changing, I change, everything changes, but then one begins to think, I am in time, and time is extended, and becomes vast. You see, the, the past before I was, before, further, further back, and forward in the future. Right. And you begin to say that time is the essence of all. Let's say time conquers, and time conquers everything. You see, you see at first the child may think, I am eternal. <laughs> and then he begins to understand that he is in time. So now, the general view that we get to is that time is the essence of existence. You see, which I think uh, is not only the common sense view, but also most of the scientific view. Yes. And uh, uh, th this is uh, now no, th this is very hard to uh, give up. You see, because it's an intense uh, conditioning. Right. In other words, it's stronger even I think than the conditioning of the observer. Of the, the observed. Right. Uh, so, so w w are we saying that thought is time, mm -hmm. thought is measurable, thought is can change, modified, expanded, and intelligence is of a different quality altogether. That's right, a different order for the order, order. different order, different quality. Different, I, I, different I, order, different quality. And yes, and uh, now I say I get an impression, you see, of this sort uh, that uh, with regard to time, you see that uh, if we think, say, of the past and the future, we think we, that the past is becoming the future. Yes, quite. But then you can see that that uh, can't be. You see that that's that's just thought. And that one gets the impression that past and future are present together, and there's a movement in another way. Yes. That the whole pattern is moving. Whole pattern is moving. Moving, but I can't say how. It, I mean, I can't picture how it moves. You see. 
In other words, that thing is moving in a perpendicular direction to the to the direction between past and future. Future, quite. And now that whole movement, uh, at first sight, you'll begin to think that movement is in another time. Do you see? Right. Quite. 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 But then that gets you back in the paradox. Yeah. So, yes. That is it, isn't it, sir? Is it is intelligence out of time, and therefore it's not related to thought, which mm. Mm, which is a movement of time. But still, thought must be related to it. I mean, is it? You say it's totally unrelated. Or is uh, it? We are asking. I am asking. I think it is unrelated. Unrelated, but at first sight, it seems there's some relation. In the sense, you distinguish between intelligent thought and I, yes, but that that requires intelligence. Yes, to recognize unintelligent thought. But when intelligence reads thought, what is the relation? You see, I think we are, let's go slowly. Mm -hmm. Does th and does thought respond to intelligence? I mean, doesn't it? That, that doesn't thought change? So thought, let's be simple. Mm. Thought is time. Yeah. Thought is the movement in time. Thought is measurable, and thought functions in the field of time. All the moving, changing, trans. Is, is intelligence within the field of time? Well, I think we've seen that in some sense it can't be, you see, but it's not, the thing is not clear. I mean, the, first of all, the thought is mechanical. Thought is mechanical. And secondly, clear. there's some sense <coughs> of a movement which is in a different, in a different time. Yes. So thought is mechanical, move, being mechanical, it can move in different directions yes. and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Is intelligence mechanical? Let's put it that way. Well, well I'd like to ask the question, you see, what is it, what does mechanicalness mean? You see yeah, that? all right. Repetitive. So repetitive. Uh, measure, measurable, comparative. Well, I'd say also dependent. Dependent, yes. Yeah. And uh, see, intelligence, uh, now let's get it clear, in some sense intelligence can't be dependent uh, on, on any condition for its, uh, uh, for its truth anyway. But it seems that in some sense intelligence doesn't operate, let's say, if the brain is not healthy. Oh, oh obviously. So in that sense intelligence seems to depend on the brain. Or, or yeah. is it the quietness of the brain. All right. Uh, it depends on the quietness of the brain. Uh, not on the activity of the brain. But still, but yeah, go ahead. There's still some relation between intelligence and the brain that we're discussing. Yes, yes. Yes, I think you see, I understand yes, that. Yes, because, yes, yes. Uh, because I we once discussed this question before many, many years ago. Yes. When I raised the idea that in physics, you could use an instrument, a measuring instrument, in two ways: the positive and the negative. That, like an electric current, you can measure the current by the swing of the instrument, or you can use it in what's called a Wheatstone bridge, where the reading is. You look for a null reading. You, the null reading indicates harmony or balance of the two sides, as it were. Yes. yes. So, if you are using the instrument negatively, then the, the, the non-functioning of the instrument is the sign that it's working right. Yes. Uh, could we say the brain? Yes, yes, yes. The brain may have thought used positively to make an image of the world. Which is the function of thought. One of the functions. One of the functions. Or of the thought. other function of thought is negative, which is to indicate that the, 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 the non harmony is. Yes, non harm. Yes, yes. Now, let's just so let's proceed from there. Is Is intelligence dependent on the brain? Mm -hmm. We come to that point. Yeah. Or when we use the word, I'm sorry, when we use the word dependent, 
What do we mean by that? Well, there are several many possible meanings. I mean, there may be simple mechanical dependence, but there's another kind which says that one can't exist without the other. Do you see? Uh, uh, see uh, if I say I depend on food to exist, but it doesn't mean that everything I think is determined by, <laughs> by what I eat. You see. Quite. Uh, Quite. Now, you see, intelligence, suppose I propose that intelligence depends for its, its existence on this brain which can indicate uh, non-harmony, but the brain does not uh, have anything to do with what's in uh, the content of the intelligence. Yes. So, if the brain is is not harmonious, can intelligence function? Well, that's the question. You see yes, that that's what we're saying. It, it cannot function if the brain is hurt. But if the intelligence doesn't function, is there intelligence? You see, I mean, yes. I say there wouldn't be. You see, that, that therefore the brain, intelligence requires the brain... Requires the brain. ...to exist. Uh, yeah. uh, but the but brain it's only an instrument. Yes, it's an not instrument which indicates disharmony or harmony. Yeah, but it is not the creator of the other. No, 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 no. <laughs> is it? Uh, uh, no, let's go slowly. No. It, it doesn't create intelligence. Yes. But it is an instrument which helps intelligence to function. Function. That's, that's it. Now, if, if the brain is functioning within the field of time all... Hmm? Oh, yeah. Up and down, negatively, positively, in any way. In that movement, or through that movement of time, can intelligence operate? Or that instrument must require for the for the intelligence to operate. Yes, I mean, the, but I would put it possibly slightly different. The quietness of the instrument is the operation. Yes. Of the intelligence. Yes. Oh, I mean, the quiet, yeah, that's right. Uh, the, the two are not separate. They're one and the same. Say, the non quietness right. of the instrument is the failure of intelligence. Yes, that's right. Hmm. Rather fun. <laughs> yes. uh, but, I, see, but I think it uh, would be useful, say, to go back into questions which uh, tend to be raised in from the whole of scientific and philosophical thinking. You see, then we would ask the question, is is there some sense in which intelligence exists uh, independently over beyond matter? You see, as some people have thought that mind and matter have some separate kind of existence. I mean, that's one question that comes up. I mean, it may not be relevant, uh, but, uh, but just I think the question should be considered in one way or another to in order to uh, help to make the mind quieter, do you see? So, I mean, other, the consideration of questions that cannot be clearly answered is one of the things that helps no, to stir up the mind. Will, no, you see, sir, that when you say, will thought help the awakening of intelligence? When you put it that way, it means that, doesn't it? Thought and matter and the exercise of thought and the movement of thought or thought saying to itself I will be quiet in order to for the awakening of intelligence any movement of thought is time any movement because it's measurable it is mm. it is functioning positively or negatively harmoniously or disharmoniously in in this field and realizing that thought may say unconsciously or deep, um, unknowingly, that I would be quiet in order to have that. Then that is still yes. within the field of time. Yes, uh, it's still projecting. Yes, yeah. is it projected and capturing within it? Within time. It's So from that, how how does this take place? Uh, this intelligence. 
and not how. When does it awaken? Well, but once again, the question is in time, you see. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying, that's why I, want, I don't want to use the word when, how. Well, are there, you can't even ask, are there conditions for it to awaken? Yes, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you can only say the, the condition for it to awaken is the non, the non-operation of thought. Yes. But that's the same as its awakening. It's not really its condition. <laughs> no, no. Uh, you see, it seems that we can't uh, even to talk about a condition as a form of thought. You see. Yes, yes. So let us agree. Any movement of thought in any direction, mm -hmm. vertical, horizontal, or in action or, in, or non-action, is still in time. Any movement of thought. Hmm? Yes, yes. Then what is the relationship of that movement to this? to this movement, to the intelligence which is not movement, which is not of time, which is not of, uh, the, which is not the product of thought and so on, so on, so on. Where do the, can the two meet? Well, they don't meet, no, but, no. but there is still some uh, relation. It's, that's what we're trying to find out. Yeah. Uh, Or is there any relationship at all? First, let's. Yeah. I, one thinks there is a relationship. One hopes there is a relationship. One projects a relationship. Yes. Is there a relationship at all? Well, it depends. What do you mean by a relationship? Then you say the uh, relationship being in contact with uh, recognition, a, f a feeling of. Being in touch with it. Oh, well, the word relationship might mean something else as well. Yeah, that, what does it? What other? What other well, meaning has it? Well, I mean, for example, I, that there is a a parallelism, or I put it once, or a harmony uh, of the two. You see that uh, that is two things may be related by without contact, but simply being in harmony. If the, if that does harmony mean a movement of both hmm, in the same direction? Yeah, well, it might also mean in some way keeping in the same order. Same in the same order. Yeah. Same order, same direction, same depth. same intensity, all that is harmony. Can thought ever be harmonious? Well, really... <laughs> thought as movement, you understand, yeah. sir? Not static thought. Thought as movement. Yeah, I understand, yes. That, there's that thought which you abstract as finished yeah. or static, which yeah. uh, in geometry, let's say, which yeah. might have some harmony. But the thought as it actually moves is always contradictory. Yeah, Th therefore it has, in, it has no harmony in itself. Yes. Oh, I, but intelligence has harmony in itself. Well, now I think I see the source of the confusion that we have the, the static products of thought seem to have certain relative harmony. Yes, yes, of course, yes. And the, but that harmony is really the result of intelligence, uh, what I'm trying to say, at least it seems to me. Let's say, let's say in mathematics uh, we may get a certain relative harmony of, uh, of uh, the product of thought, uh, even though, let's say, the actual movement of the thought of the mathematician is not necessarily in harmony, generally won't be in harmony. Yes. Now, but that harmony which appears in the mathematics uh, is the result of intelligence, isn't it? I would... Yeah, precisely, I would like to... Uh, now, 
And it's not perfect harmony because every form of mathematics has been proved to have some limit, do you see? Yes, yes. Uh, that's why I call it only relative. Relative, <laughs> correct. Uh, now, uh, but one could go further and say, I think that uh, not, not so much thought, but uh, the action which I, we ha there's a f another phase of the question of time, which is the action which we actually do in general, which in which we also seem to need time, you see, yes. that is chronological time. Yes. And uh, that, that action, at least, should be in harmony, it seems to me. Yeah, as we say, sir, can thought in its movement, or is thought is movement, does, in that movement, is there harmony? If there is, then it has relationship with the other. Yes. If there is no harmony, and therefore it's a contradiction, change, uh, all the rest of it, thought, then it has no relationship with the other. Well, then would you say that we could do entirely without thought? I'll put it on the other way. Right. Intelligence uses thought. All right, that, that's all we... Intelligence, but now how can it use something which is disharmonious? I, in the sense, expression, communication, uh, using thought which is, dis, which is contradictory, which is uh, not harmonious, to create things in the world. Well, but still there must be in some other sense a harmony in what is done with thought and, and what you just described, you see. Let's go slow in this. Rather go. <laughs> so can we first put into words, negatively or positively, what is, what is intelligence, what is not intelligence? Or is that impossible? Because words is thought, um, uh, time, measure and all the rest of it. We can't put it in words. I mean, we're trying to point. We're trying to point. Now, yes. could we say that thought can function as the pointer to intelligence and then its contradiction doesn't matter? I mean, at least That's right. That's right. Uh, That's right. Because we are not using it for its content or its meaning, mm -hmm. uh, it right. but rather for some as a pointer. A pointer which points beyond the domain of thought That's and right. time. So thought is a pointer. Yeah. The content is intelligence. The content to which it points. Yes. Can we put it, this thing in hell differently, may we? Thought is barren. Yes. Barren. Barren. When it moves in it by itself. Yeah. yeah. Which is mechanical and all the rest of it. Thought is a pointer. But without intelligence, the pointer has no value. Well, I say, could we say that intelligence reads the pointer? I mean, yeah. I mean, as the pointer, if there's nobody to, to see and the pointer, it doesn't point. Quite, quite. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. this is necessary. Mm. Intelligence is necessary. Without that, this has uh, no meaning at all. But could we say now that how... That thought in some way, see, if thought without intelligence points in a very confused yeah, way. Yeah, confused, no, not irrelevant way. Irrelevant, you know, meaningless, and yeah. so on. Now, then, 
with intelligence it begins to point in another way yes. uh, but then somehow thought and intelligence seem to uh, fuse in a, in a common function yes so we are asking what is action in relationship to intelligence right yes what is what, what is action in relation to intelligence and the carrying out of that action is necessary and uh, thought is necessary yes well thought is necessary but and, and this thought points now it, it points obviously toward the toward matter. Yes. And that, that seems to point both ways, that is. Yes, yes. Toward intelligence. To, yes. Um, I don't know whether, you see, one of the questions which always comes up is, should we make a, should we say that intelligence and matter are merely a distinction of the same thing? Or are they different, you see? Are they really separated? Now, it mm. would seem that they ought to be a distinction in the same thing. Yes. I think they are separate. They, they are distinct. I think they are. They are distinct, but are they actually separate? What do you mean by the word separate? Well, not related, not connected, not. Um, well, is they have not. They they have no uh, a common source. Yeah. I mean, do they do they lack a common source? Do they or do they have one? Yes, yeah, that's just it. What, what's the now let's clear. Has thought, matter and all that, and intelligence have their common source? Yeah. I think they have. Yeah. Bound to have. Why well, otherwise they're in yeah, the harmony, yeah. yeah. Bound to have. But you see, thought has has conquered the world. Has what? Conquered, conquered, the, conquered the world. Yeah. Well, it con you know, so conquered the domi It dominates. Dominates the world. Yeah. Thought, the intellect, that dominates the world. And therefore, intelligence has very little place here. When what one thing dominates, the other must be subservient. Yes. I mean, one could always ask, I don't know if it's relevant, how, how it came about that intelligence... Oh, that I think it's very simple. Well, what would you say? I would say thought must have security. It is seeking security in all its movement. Yes, but... But intelligence is not seeking security. Mm. It, it has no security. The idea of security doesn't exist in intelligence. Mm. Intelligence itself is secure, not it seeks security. Yes, but one could always consider this question: Why, why, how did it come about that intelligence was allowed itself to be dominated? Do you see that? Because, oh, that's again fairly clear. Hmm? Pleasure, yes, uh, comfort, fear, physical security. Mm -hmm. First of all, physical security. Yeah. Well, but security in relationship, security in action, security. But that's a kind of illusion of security. And that, that's illusion of security, of course. But in a way, you could say thought uh, got out of hand and ceased to allow itself to be ordered, given a general order by intelligence. It ceased to stay in harmony with intelligence and began to uh, move on its own accord. On its own accord. Uh, seeking. Uh, security and pleasure and so on. Yes, that's, so as we were saying the other day when we were talking, the whole Western world is based on measure. Yes. Remember we talked something about it. The other and the Eastern world tried to go beyond that. Yes. But they use thought to go beyond it. To try anyway. To, yeah, try and go beyond mm -hmm. the measure by exercising thought, and therefore they were, they were caught in thought. Now, b 
security, physical security is necessary. And therefore, physical existence, physical pleasures, physical um, wealth, everything that became tremendously important. Yes, I was thinking about that a little bit. If you went back to the animal, then this instinctive response toward pleasure and security would be yeah, right. Right. But now when thought comes in, it can produce, it dazzles the instinct and, that's and, right, and, that's and right. produces all sorts of uh, glamour and false, <laughs> false all pleasure and false mischief. security. And, mm. and the instincts are not intelligent enough to deal with the complexity of thought. Yes. And then, uh, but then, 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 therefore, thought went wrong because it uh, it excited the instincts, and the instincts demanded more. <laughs> quite, quite. So thought really created a world of illusion, miasma, confusion, yes, hmm? and, and put away the intelligence. Well, from what we said before, it, it made the brain very chaotic and noisy. Yeah, so quite. It, and therefore, that's the, right. The, uh, the intelligence is the operation, the silence of the brain. So yes. Therefore, the noisy brain is not intelligent. <laughs> noisy brain is not intelligent. <laughs> Quite right. Well, that's, I mean, that more or less explains the origin of the thing. And yes. Now, let's see, where were we before this? We were, we were trying to find out what is the relationship in action of thought and intelligence. Yes. Because, I mean, everything is action hmm? or inaction. Yes. And what is the relationship of all that with two intelligence? Thought does produce chaotic action, fragmentary action. At, at present. Huh? Well, I mean, it, 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 when it is not ordered by intelligence. By in with, with, that's of course. Yeah. And it's not ordered by intelligence in the way we all live. Well, just because what we just said, the yeah. whole explanation. Yeah. I mean, politics, it's a fragmented activity, yeah. therefore mm -hmm. it's not a, an activity of a wholeness. Yes. The activity of wholeness is intelligence. But intelligence also has to understand the activity of thought. That's yes, true. yes, we said that. Yes. Now, could you say that uh, when intelligence understands the activity of thought, then thought is different uh, in its operation? Yes, obviously. Yes. Obviously. If that is, if, my, if thought has created nationalism as a means of security, mm. and when one sees the fallacy of it, the seeing of it, the seeing, the fallacy of yeah. it is intelligence, and thought then creates a different kind of world in which nationalism doesn't exist. Yes. Right. And therefore division, conflict, war, and all the rest. Well, that's very clear then. You see that say, intelligence sees exactly. the falseness of uh, what's going on. Yeah. Now that falseness stops. Now when thought is free of this falseness, it's different. Different, and, that's and, right. But then it begins to uh, be a parallel to intelligence. Yeah. that's right. That is, uh, it begins to carry out the implications of intelligence. Yes. And <coughs> Therefore, thought has a place. Yes. And see, thought, it, and that's very yes. interesting because you could say thought is not, never actually controlled or dominated by intelligence. Thought always moves on its own. Yes. But when, uh, in the light of intelligence, when the falseness is seen, then thought moves it parallel. Move parallel or in, in harmony, harmony with, with intelligence. Yeah, that's right. But thought never has anything that forces it to do anything. Yes, yes. But then that would suggest, you see, that intelligence and thought are, are you know, have this common, what we said, origin or origin. substance. Yes. And that there are two ways of talking, to uh, calling attention to. Uh, to a, uh, a greater whole. Yes. So, one can see politically, religiously, psychologically, how thought has created a world of tremendous contradiction, fragmentation, 
and the intelligence that is the product of this confusion tries to bring order in this confusion yeah. not the intelligence which is which sees the falseness of this yeah. i don't know if i make myself mm -hmm. clear you see i can be terribly intelligent being though i am chaotic well in some ways i mean yes that's what's happening now. yes i mean but that i suppose uh, it's rather hard to understand that but uh, at this moment but uh, you could say that in some limited uh, uh, sphere uh, it seems that intelligence is able to operate yes but outside it doesn't and uh, after all say isn't it we are concerned with living not the theories not uh, theories have insight and so on but Uh, one is concerned with a life in which intelligence operates. Intelligence which is not of time, which is not of measure, which is not of the, which is not the product or the movement of thought, yes. or the order of thought. Now, I want, a human being wants to live a different kind of life. He's He's dominated by thought. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's, he, his thought is always functioning in measurement, comparative, uh, com in comparison, in conflict. He says, how am I to be free of all this in order to be intelligent? How can I l have, how can m the me or How can I be the instrument of this intelligence? Yes, well, uh, obviously, it can't be. I mean, <laughs> that just did. Uh, I mean, because I mean, the, the, this thought with time is the is the essence of unintelligence. Unintelligence. But I, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of that all the time. Yes, I mean, the thought is projecting some sort of fantasy of uh, what intelligence is. Yes. And trying to achieve it. Therefore, I'm saying it is thought must be completely still for the awakening of that. I can't. There can't be a, a movement of thought and yet awakening of the, that. Yes, I mean that, that's clear on one level. Now the, and I think that. You see that uh, if we consider that that thought actually is mechanical, yes, and see so therefore uh, that may be seen on one level, but still the mecha the mechanism continues continues quite, and through uh, instincts and pleasure and fear and mm -hmm. so on. And now you see the intelligence therefore has to come to grips with this question of you know the the pleasure and the fear and the desire which makes thought continue. Yes. Uh, and. And you see, there's always this trap, which is to form a, a concept of it, or an image of it, which is partial. Of course, of course. See, as a human being, I would be concerned only with this. I know what, how confused, contradictory, disharmonious my, my one's life is. How am, is it possible to change that so that intelligence can function in my life so that I live without disharmony, so that the pointer, <laughs> the direction, is guided by intelligence? Yes. And You see, sir, that's why the religious people have used the word, instead of using the word intelligent, they've used the word God. Well, what is the advantage of that word? I, I, I don't know what the advantage is. No, but why did they use such a word? Because uh, God, you know, f became from the primitive, the fear, 
fear of thunder, fear of, you know, the nature. And gradually out of that grew the idea that there is a super father. Yes, it's still the brain functioning. Brain, sure. of course, of course, I'm just saying that. Yeah. So, they said, trust God, have faith in God. Then God will operate through you. Yes, and it's a sort of a metaphor. Yes. If you said God is intelligence. Yes. Uh, but most people didn't take it as a metaphor. No, of course not. That's a, that's a terrific image. Yes. Uh, but you could say that if God means that which is immeasurable or beyond the thought, then. It is unnameable, it is immeasurable, therefore don't have an image. It's you. And then that will operate within the uh, measurable. Yes. If what I'm trying to convey, ask you, or convey is that the desire for this intelligence through time has created this image of God. Yes. And the image of God, Jesus, Krishna, whatever it is, having faith in that, which is still the movement of thought, I hope that way there will be harmony in my life. Yes, and uh, this sort of image, because it's so total, uh, produces a overriding uh, desire, urge, yes. you know, or, uh, that is, it overrides rationality. Overrides rationality. Everything. everything and, and I mean, what you heard the other day, what these archbishops and bishops are saying, it sounded so ridiculous. Uh, that, that, is, that only Jesus made it, nothing else yeah. made it. Well, but it's the same movement, you see, whereby, say, pleasure overrides rationality. Got, of fear, course, of course, fear, fear and pleasure. They override, uh, yeah. they, everything goes, uh, no proportion can be established, yeah. you see. And uh, you know, What I'm trying to find is, you see, the whole world is conditioned mm -hmm. this way. Yes, but um, that the question, you see, well, I think uh, you hinted at it before, that said, well, what is this world, you see, that which is conditioned this way. You see, yes. if, if we take this world as objectively existent, then we have fallen into the same trap. Actually. Trap, oh, of course, of course, of course. Uh, that is, the whole world is is the re result of this way of thinking. There is a, both the yeah. cause and the effect yes. of this way of thinking. This way of thinking, that's right. And this way of thinking is, is disharmony and chaos and intelligence and so on. You see, I was listening to the labor conference <laughs> in Blackpool. It was very interesting how clever, how some of them very, very serious, double talk and all, but all that, take all that. They are thinking in terms of Labour Party and Conservative Party. Yeah. They, they don't say, look, let's all of us get together and see what's the most best thing, most marvelous thing for human beings. Well, they're not capable of this whole no, structure. That's just it. But they're exercising their intelligence. Well, in that limited framework. Yes. Uh, yes, but that's always where what all our trouble has always been, that people have developed technology and weapons and various things in, a, in terms of some limited intelligence, which is serving highly unintelligent purposes. Yes, that's just it. Quite. And I think for thousands of years that's been going on. And, yes. Uh, see, and th th then of course, you see, I think a uh, reaction tends to arise like this, that this is all much too big, do you see? Yes. In other words, it's a vast thing over time and space and, you know. And, it's really very simple, you know. Uh, Extraordinarily simple, the, this. The sense of harmony. Because it's not, because it is so simple, it can function in the most complex field. Yes.
So let's go back. So if we say the source is common to both thought and intelligence. Yes, we got that far. Mm. What is that source? Well, I mean, that would be beyond that. Wait a minute, sir. Let's see, let's find see. Yeah. What is that source? They generally attribute to some philosophical concept. Or they say this, that source is God. I'm just using that word for the moment. Yes. Or Jehovah yes, or Brahman, it doesn't matter. That yes. source is the common, is the central movement which divides itself into matter and intelligence. Yes. But that just verbal statement and that has just an idea which is, which is which is still thought. Yes, it's still thought. Therefore you can't find it through thought. But see then that would raise the question if if you find it then what are you, you see? I mean, are you, you, you don't exist. Yeah. You can't exist when you're asking what is the source. Yeah. You, you yes. are time, movement, um, environmental, you are there, all that. Yes, I say the whole of, see, in that question, then the whole of the, what, uh, this division is, is put aside. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the point, isn't it? And then there's no time and no way. But yet we say, look, I'm not going to exercise thought. Hmm? I don't, I, when the me enters, there is division. So, deliberately or um, understanding the whole of this, what we've been talking about, I put away the me altogether. But that sounds like a contradiction. I, I know, and I'm just using, I put away, I can't put it away. No. It takes place. Yes. Then what is the source? Can it ever be named? I mean, say for instance, the, the Jewish religious feeling is that it is not nameable. Yes, well, the name of God is that. You, can, you don't name it, you can't talk about it, you can't touch it. You can only look. And the Hindus and others say the same thing in different words. Yes. Uh, and the Christians have tripped themselves over this word Jesus and their image. They have never gone to the source of it. Yes, well, and that, yes, that's a very complex question. <laughs> uh, because it might be that they were trying to synthesize several philosophies. Yes, yes of course, because uh, after all, Christianity came out of Judea. And, and Greece and, and, uh, and, of course, and Asia. It, it, they're in relay, of course. Yeah. Uh, the other day, the whole group of Arabs on television were marching, I forget where, and another Later on, uh, uh, from Israel, a group was marching. I said, look, look only the headdress. Mm -hmm. You follow, yeah. sir? They're, they're Arabic, mm -hmm. which, is the, which is the outcome of Hebrew. Yes. And they have divided them. You follow? Mm -hmm. And which is it so appalling. Yes, I mean, if you watch the uh, people on television in Lebanon, you could very easily say they look just like the Jews. Or <laughs> that's it. But, 
after all, they're all Semitic type and yeah. all the rest of it. I mean, that's, there it is. We see this. Now, I want, I want to get at this. What is the source? Hmm. Can thought find it? And thought is born from that source. An intelligence which is also boy, born from that source. I mean, it's like a, uh, two streams moving in a different yeah. direction. Or would you say matter is born from that source? Yeah, too, in, of in course. General, yes. I mean, the whole universe. Universe. But then the source is beyond the universe. Of course. Well, must be otherwise. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that? Could we put it this way, sir? Thought is energy, so is intelligence. Yes. So is my thought matter, the mechanical, is energy. Yes. Intelligence is also energy. Yes. This is uh, confused, uh, polluted, hmm? dividing itself, fragmenting itself. Yes, it's, it's multiple. Multiple. And this is not. This is not polluted. It cannot divide itself as my intelligence and your intelligence. It, it is intelligence, it's not divisible. Now, see, I mean, it, and it's, it has sprung from a source of energy hmm, which has divided itself. Why has it divided itself? Because of for physical reasons, for comfort, for existence, for uh, you know all the rest of it, for to maintain existence. maintain physical existence. I see. So a part of intelligence has been changed in such a way as to help to maintain physical physically. Physically, yes. It has developed in a yes. certain way and gone on in that way. Yes. They both are energy. So, so there is only one energy. Yes, well these are different forms of energy. Of energy. You see, I don't know if... Well, wait a minute. What's that? Oh, I was saying that, uh, you know, although it's a much uh, more limited scale, there are many analogies to this, uh, you see, in physics, where you can say light is ordinarily a very complex wave motion, infinitely complex. But in the laser, it can be made to yeah, all go yeah. together in laser, a very simple yes, way. You yes, see, and, yes, uh, I was thinking about that. Yes. And uh, what monstrous thing they are going to produce out of that? Using it destructively, of oh, course. Oh, there, there is. You see, sir, there yeah. it is. Right. It's, it's that it, the thought may get something good, but then it it always gets used in a broader uh, yeah. way that's destructive. Uh, but, but anyway. Uh, So, sir, there is only energy, which is the source. Now, would you say energy is a kind of movement, or, or it would be? No. 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 It's energy. I, <laughs> movement is a movement that goes off into this, yes. into the field of thought. Movement is in the field of thought. Now, I don't... Yes. yes, we have to get clear this notion of energy. You see, uh, I also looked up that word. It was an old Greek oh, yeah. word. Uh, it's uh, based on the notion of work, as energy means to work within. Work, work within, yes. I so, but now you say, as an energy, it works, but no movement, is that it? Yes. 
I was thinking about it yesterday. Not thinking, I was feel, I, I realize, you know, how it feels one. The source is there, hmm? uncontaminated, non-movement, untouched by thought. Is there. From that, these two are born. Why are they born at all? Well, I guess said that the one was necessary for survival. That's all. Yeah. In survival, this has been denied or put aside. In its, in its totality, in its uh, wholeness. Yes, it, it's what I'm trying to get at is this. Huh? I want to find out, as a human being living in this world with all the chaos, means suffering and all the rest of it, Can the human mind touch that source in which the two divisions don't exist. It don't exist? And because it has touched the source, because it has no division, it can operate without the sense of division. I don't but, know if I'm conveying that. Then how is it possible for the human mind not to touch the source? How to touch it? I mean, how, why is it that it does not touch the yeah, source? Yeah, why? Uh, because we are not, we are consumed by this, by thought, by the cleverness of thought, by the movement of thought. Mm. All their gods, their meditations, their silence, yeah. is everything is there. Now, but of course, I think this uh, brings us to the question of, you know, of life and death then, because yes. uh, that's one of the things which gets in the way, I think, yes. that, that also related to survival, obviously. That, uh, because the desire, because of thought and its field of security, its desire yeah. for security, hmm? it has created death as something separate from itself. Yes, all right, so that may be the key point. Right? Yeah, that's it. I, I was coming hmm? to what we were talking about yesterday morning to the students. Um, you see, if you think it over, I say, look at it this way, that thought has uh, constructed itself for as an instrument for survival, that is, not to die, you see. Yes. Uh, now, and therefore, Therefore, what it has done is it has created immortality in Jesus. Or anywhere. In or in Jesus, or this, or that. Well, but thought cannot possibly contemplate its own death, you see. That, it's built of into course, its own of course. Structure, right? Of course. So if it tries to do so, it always projects something else. Yes. From, vent, from some other broader point from which it looks at. See, if, if anybody tries to imagine that he is dead, then he is still imagining himself alive. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, uh, and then you can always complicate that by saying, you know, with all sorts of theories of religion and so on. But, yes. Uh, it seems to be built into thought that it it cannot possibly uh, consider death, you see, uh, properly. No, it cannot. And uh, it, it means ending itself. Yes, but you see, that's very interesting. You see that. Suppose we take the death of the body, which we see outwardly, the organism dies, it loses the energy, I mean, is that... Yes, yes. Uh, now, and therefore it goes, it falls apart, you see, so... Uh, it is really, the body is the instrument of, of, the energy. Uh, of the energy. Yes, so let's say the energy ceases to imbue the body, and therefore the body no longer has any wholeness. Yes. Now, uh, the... So you could say that thought also 
the energy in some way uh, goes to thought, as, I mean, as to the body, would you, would that make sense? What's that? Do? Well, look, that when thought is going, uh -huh. then somehow energy is being given to thought as well. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Now, you see, I mean, you or other people have often used the phrase that the mind or something dies to, to the whole of thought, which, uh, I mean, the way of putting it is at first puzzling because at first you would think that it was thought that should die. Die, <laughs> quite, quite. But now you're saying it's the mind that dies. Dies, quite. Uh, and, uh, or the energy that dies to thought. Uh, the nearest I can see what that means is that that when thought is working, it, it is invested with a certain energy by, by the mind or the intelligence. Yes. And when the thought is no longer relevant, then the energy goes, yep. and the thought is like a dead organism. Quite. That That's right. Uh, now, you see, it, it's very hard for the mind to accept this because uh, it seems that thought is the comparison between thought and the organism is so poor. You see, the thought is so insubstantial, and the organism is so but much more substantial. But uh, it's So the death of the organism seems something far more than the death of thought. Thought, yes. Now. But uh, that this is a point that's not clear. You see, uh, uh, would you say that in in the death of thought we have the essence of the death of the organism as well? As well, quite obviously. Now, although it's on a small scale, as it were, it's the of the same nature. Yes. Hmm? yes. You see, sir. Wait a minute. Let's get. As we said, energy in both of them, hmm? and. Thought, in its movement, has created this energy, is, is this energy, and this thought cannot see itself die. It has no way of uh, imagining or projecting Pro it, yeah. uh, conceiving its yeah. own death. Yes. Therefore, it escapes from death. Well, it gives the illusion. Of illusion, of course. You know, I'm talking yeah. in illusion of death and all the rest of it. And it has created the illusion of immortality or uh, a state of beyond death, a projection of its own desire for its own continuity. Yes, well, that's, that's uh, one thing that thought may have begun desiring the continuity of, of the organism. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, and then gone beyond that. And gone beyond that to desire its own consequences. Yes, that was the mistake. Yes, that's that was yes. where it went wrong. Went wrong. And, uh, that's right. It saw, it, it saw the organism it, as itself. It's it's a, it, it felt itself to be an extension, or, a, or not really an extension, but the essence of the organism. You see, yes. that, see at first thought is merely an in, uh, functioning in the organism, and then thought begins to present itself as the essence of the organism. Organism, yes. I mean, the soul. I think. Yes. And, That's uh, right. That's right. And uh, then and then thought begins to desire its own immortality. Yes. And and thought, it knows itself and is very well aware that it is not immortal. It knows it only outwardly. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, it knows it as an outward fact. Fact, yes. And therefore it creates all immortality in the pictures or images. I listen to all this as an outsider and I say to myself, this is perfectly true, so clear, logical, sane, you see it very clearly, both psychologically and physically. Mm. Yes. Now, my next question, observing all this, I say, well, can can the mind keep the purity of the original source? I don't know if I, hmm? this, the original energy. pristine clarity of that energy, which is not touched by corruption of by the corrupt thought, by thought at all. I don't know if I'm conveying it. Well, I mean the question is clear. But yeah. Now, question is, if the question is clear, can the mind do it? 
can the mind ever discover that? Well, what is the mind then? Mind, we say, if now we say organism, thought, um, the brain, yeah. with all the memories, experiences, knowledge, etc., all that, which is all time, and the mind says, can I use uh, that quantity, <laughs> says, can I come to this? Yes, well, it's again the same. It cannot. Yeah. Wait a minute. It cannot. All right. Then I say to myself, as it cannot, I'll be quiet. You see the tricks it's played? Yes. I'll learn how to be quiet. I will learn how to meditate in order to be quiet. I see the importance of having a, a mind that is free of time, free of the, of the mechanism of thought. I will control it subjugated, put away from it. It's, but it is still the operation of yeah. that. And that's very clear. Then what is it to do? But, because it, I mean, a human being who just lives in this, this house, he must inquire into this. Yes. And it's be, that's what we're doing. As we are beginning to as we begin to inquire into it all, in inquiring we come to this source. Is it a perception, an insight, and that insight has nothing whatsoever to do with thought? Has it, has insight, is insight the result of thought? The, the, the conclusion of an insight is thought. Yes. But insight itself is not thought. No. So I've got a key to it. Then what is inside? Can I invite it? Cultivate it? No, you say you can't do any of that, but there is a kind of energy that's needed. That just, I can't do anything. When I cultivate this part, it is desire. When I want, when I say I will do this or that, it's all so, insight is not the product of thought, is not the, in the order of thought. Yes. Now, how does one come upon this insight? <laughs> well, we have come upon it because yes. we denied all this. Yes, it's there when you. I mean, we we'll say we never can answer the question how you come upon anything. No. Uh, I think it's fairly clear. So you do come upon it when you see the whole thing. So insight is the perception of the whole. A fragment cannot see this. But the eyes that sees the fragments and so forth. The eye seeing the fragments sees the whole. And, the, and the, the quality of a mind that sees the whole is not touched by thought and therefore there is perception, there is insight. I don't know if I'm... No, we'll go over that more slowly perhaps. Huh? I said perhaps we'll go over that more slowly then. <laughs> yeah. That the, uh, I mean, we see that the, all the fragments. You see, then, could we say that the the actual energy, which or move uh, activity, which which sees those fragments, is whole? Yes. Yes. Uh, that is, we don't manage to ever to see the whole because uh, we are educated. We are all the rest of it. Yes. But I mean, we wouldn't uh, anyway see the whole as something 
but rather the wholeness is the freedom and seeing all the fragments. Yeah, the, the, that's the, right. Freedom to see. Yeah. And the freedom doesn't exist when there are fragments. Yes, and that makes a paradox, you see. Yeah, if of you say. <laughs> uh, but the whole start does not start from the uh, fragments. I mean, no, of course not. I mean, yeah. once the whole operates, then there are no fragments, right. you see. Right. So, I mean, the paradox is, uh, you know, comes from supposing that the fragments are independently real. You see, that they really, that they exist independently of thought, you see. Yes. Now, then you would say, if I suppose the fragments are there independently of me and my thought, and then I must somehow do something about them. <laughs> that would be the paradox. But now, the whole starts from the insight that these fragments, in a way, are nothing, you see. And that's the way it seems to me, that they're not substantial realities. No, no, no. I mean, they're very insubstantial. <laughs> insubstantial, yes. Uh, and therefore, they don't prevent you and uh, prevent wholeness. Right. But you see, one of the things that often causes confusion is that when when you put it in or in thought, it seems that you're presented with the fragments as real, substantial realities, and then you have to see them. Then you all say, but as long as the fragments are there, there's no homeless, and you can't see them. Can't see them. <laughs> <coughs> but that all comes back then to the to the one <coughs> to the one uh, source. <coughs> I'm sure, sir. Really serious people have asked this question. Yes. Mm -hmm. They have asked it and tried to find an answer through thought. Yes. Well, it seems natural. Yeah, naturally. <laughs> yes, obviously. And they never saw that they were caught in thought. Well, that's always the trouble that. I mean, everybody gets into this trouble that he seems to be looking at everything, at his problems, and saying, well, those are my problems. Oh, he's quite I'm looking. <coughs> but that looking is only thinking. Thinking, yes. But it's confused with looking. I mean, yes. Uh, and you see, that's the, one of the confusions that arises is that, you see, if you say, don't, don't think, but look, then a person feels, I'm already looking. Yes, <laughs> quite <laughs> So you see, so they say, I, this question has been put to me before a long time ago, and they say, all right, then I must control thought, I must subjugate thought, I may, must make my mind quiet, then it becomes whole, then I can see the power, mm -hmm. you follow fragments, and then everything, I, I have touched the source. But it's still in this, is still the operation of thought all the time. Yes, I mean, this brings up that the operation of thought is unconscious for the most yeah. part, and therefore one doesn't know what's going on. You right, see, yeah. you may say consciously we have realized that all this has to be changed, yeah. or it has to be different or something. But and the unconscious is still going on. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> can, can, what, can, what, can I listen to you Unconsciously, wait a minute, I'm coming to that, I'm coming to that. Not unconscious. Can you talk to me, put it, sorry, wipe that sentence out. Can you talk to my unconscious? Yes. Hmm? Knowing my conscious brain is going to resist you. Because you are telling me something which is revolutionary. You're telling me something which, which shatters all my house, which I built so carefully, and I won't listen to you. You follow? In my instinctive reaction is to push you away. So you realize that and say, look, all right, old friend, just don't bother to listen to me. 
that way. I'm going to talk to your unconscious. Yeah. I'm going to talk to your unconscious and make that unconscious see that whatever movement it does is still within the field of time and so on and so on. Yeah. So, on. so you, your conscious mind is never in operation. And when it operates, it must inevitably resist or say, well, I, I will accept. Therefore, it creates a conflict in itself and all the rest of it. So can you talk to me, to my unconscious? Yeah, well, that, I mean, you can always ask how you say that. No, 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 no. You tell me first. Yeah. Look, look boy, don't resist. Leave, yes. go and think about, look at that tree. Listen, mm -hmm. but I'm going to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, sounds funny, but you follow mm -hmm. what I mean. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to, we, we two are communicating each, with each other without the conscious mind listening. I don't know if I can. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm Well, I'm more or less, yeah. I think this is what takes place, really, sir. Hmm. When you are talking to me, I'm not... I was noticing it. Yeah. I was not listening to your words so much. I was listening to you. Yes. I was... I was open to your... <laughs> Not to your words, to your, because I know you've explained and I've looked at the dictionaries and all the rest of it. I said, all right, leave all that. I'm listening to you, not to the words which you have used, but to the meaning, to the inward quality of your feeling, which wants to tell me something. Yes. I, I don't know. I understand. I think that that changes me. Not all this verbalization. So can can I can you talk to me about my idiocy, my illusion, my peculiar tendencies, without the conscious mind interfering and saying, "Well, please don't touch it. Leave me alone." You know they, as you, of course you know what. They tried <coughs> subliminal uh, propaganda, yeah. advertising, <laughs> quickly, so that you don't really pay attention, but you're <laughs> conscious, mm -hmm. so you buy that particular soap. We are not doing that, <laughs> that would be deadly. What you, you are telling me, say, look, look at the tree and, or the cloud or the picture on that wall, forget, forget, don't listen to me with your conscious ears, but listen to me with the ears that are, that hear much deeper. That's how I listened to you this mm. morning, because I'm terribly interested in the source. Yeah. But you were. Yes. You follow, sir? I understand, yeah. And I said, but you will come to that. I caught on to it. And we'll come to that. And I, I'm really interested in that one thing. And this is all, we be explainable, easily understood. But to come to that thing together, feel it together. So, no, you follow? <coughs> I think that's the way to break a, a conditioning, a habit, a, a, an image which I have cultivated. You know, you don't talk to me about, I don't know, talk to me 
at a level where the conscious mind is is not totally interested. <laughs> I don't know if I can <laughs> sound silly, but you understand what I'm mm. saying, sir? I say for instance, I have a conditioning. Yeah. You can point it out a dozen times. Oh, you see the fallacy of it, the illusion, the stupidity. I still go on. I resist it. I say, no, it should be. What shall I do in this world if I don't? <laughs> All the rest of it. But you see the truth that as long as mind is conditioned, there must be conflict and all the rest of it. So you, so you penetrate or push aside my resistance and get to that. Get to, get the unconscious to listen to you. Because the unconscious is much more subtle. Much more quick because it's not. It may be frightened, but it it sees the it sees the danger of fear. Much quicker than the conscious mind does. Like when when I was walking in California, high in the mountains, I was looking at um, birds and trees and watching everything, and I heard a rattler, and I jumped. It's the unconscious that jumped, mm -hmm. that made the um, body jump. Because I saw the rat lab and I jumped, it was two or three feet from me, you could have struck me very easily. If the conscious brain was operating, it would have taken several seconds. I don't know if I... Yeah, so. Well... And then to reach the unconscious, you have to have an action which uh, doesn't uh, have, I mean, doesn't directly uh, appeal to the conscious. Huh? Yes, which, which is, I think that is affection, that is love. Hmm. I mean, I, uh, you talk my consciousness, my waking consciousness, it is hard, you know, clever, mm. subtle, and, you know, brittle. And you penetrate that through, say, oh, well, keep your beastly little stuff. Mm? And you penetrate it, you penetrate me with your, you know, with your look, with your affection, with all that feeling you have. So, and, and that operates, not anything else. I don't want this. Mm -hmm. You don't mean three minutes. What? Ten minutes past three one? minutes. Oh, my watch is wrong. No, this is um, according to your talking.